Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Friday Night Fights. My name is Dr. Fish, and I'll be your host for this evening, your stream operator, but I have two wonderful casters. The Diamond Duo is back. We've got Dega's dad and Kodamora. Hello, gentlemen. It's a pleasure as always. How are you doing? Doing great. And as I found out, it's the Diamond Ohio duo, too. Yeah. Did not know Kodamora was a fellow Ohioan, but here we are. So yeah. if it couldn't Exciting. get any better. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if it couldn't get any better than it, than it has. And man, excited Friday night. And of course, in, 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 in kind of the fashion that followed last season, we have a week following mega changes kind of think what do you think about the changes all the buffs over 20 buffs all the nerfs well like four nerfs but what, yeah. what do you think of this meta and where we're we at so even if it's not the top dog in win rate rogue is certainly the deck that everyone is playing to beat and at least where i am 
on the ladder these days, you are either playing rogue pl or pl playing a deck that beats rogue or playing to druid, playing druid, trying to beat those counter decks. So it's a bit of an interesting kind of rock, paper, scissors game. And it's, uh, it will really, really be cool to see if these players tonight, Saku and Judo Chop, have uh, solved the puzzle themselves. So speaking of rock, paper, scissors, you know, kind of what are the combatants bringing tonight in, in form of their rock, paper, and their scissors? Are there mirrors, or what, what's the differences here? So we have some pretty similar lineups. Saku has brought the hunter, the mage, the rogue, and the shaman. And Judo Chop has brought hunter, mage, rogue, and warlock instead of shaman. Hmm. So, and do we, we know the, uh, the bands? Yes. As of yet? We do. Mm -hmm. What yeah. are those? So, um, Judo Chop has banned Saku's Shaman, and Saku has banned Judo Chop's Rogue. So, we have one Rogue coming in. We have both Hunters and both Mages, but a Warlock for Judo Chop instead. Interesting. Of mm. a Rogue. So, if, if, if given the choice, would you rather play Warlock or would you rather play Rogue? Um, neither. I'm not very. I I'm not a big. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a big rogue player. You can. That's not an you option. Can, you can look at. You can look at my two submissions, and I, I. I'd probably say warlock. Um, just if I have to pick, I. I am not comfortable with the good rogue deck right now. It is a very difficult deck to play. If you could, but and I'm saying this. My submissions are all up, so you can. Everyone can see on the site. I have not submitted a rogue this week, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I. I will. <laughs> That, that is my pick. All right. We, I think we're still waiting for them to kick off. And, oh, okay, and I'll kind get of, started. Yeah, Dankus, what do you what do you think from what makes this rogue kind of the hot and cold deck, right? We, we know it's a tempo style, but it's not your standard tempo style, but kind of walk us through the general things we're going to see and, and what makes a successful rogue pilot and one that kind of falls flat. So... Ro a lot of rogue success really comes with knowing how to utilize Edwin Van Cleef and Sinstone Graveyard to make sure that you can create the largest board possible. You're going to want to be using those cards to both build out your board and to just push that extra bit of damage that you can through the defense of the counters. So it's a bit tricky, really to make sure that you can integrate in these large bodies while making sure that that burn goes toward the face. And a lot of the decks like Mage have really good tools at mitigating what Rogue is trying to do and limiting their damage. So Rogue needs to both solve the puzzle and get through Mage's defenses while also stopping the Mage from putting on their own pressure with either skeletons or large dragons. So that seems to be... That seems to be the matchup in the gist there. Other decks like Hunter and Shaman can just get run over if the Rogue is able to start and Sinstone Graveyard out an 8-8 or a huge Draco weapon. Mm. They can just get it going. Edwin can draw the whole deck by turn 7 or 8, and the Rogue can really use all of the tools at their disposal at all times. Yeah, one of the things I found really interesting about the deck is that we call it almost like a Miracle-style Rogue, but it's really... It, it's. It's like one step below that, right? Your, your pop-off turns don't have to be massive, right? And I, I think that just putting seven sevens on the board, getting a weapon with eight attack on it, uh, often is enough to just kind of keep pushing things down. So the, it's this weird hybrid of where you don't hold off for this one massive pop-off turn to, to OTK them, but at the same time, you have to know when to push it and when to go for it. Yeah, and... I, I will say that personally, I do pop off pretty hard. And, you know, maybe that's not always right. But one of the skills you need to know is when you should play around things versus when you should just go in and commit. Because a lot of the time they might have the Rust Rot Viper, they might have the Solid Alibi or the Freeze. And, you know, you need to know when you just have to win and know except that if they have the answer you're not getting there so to start off we have the hunter mirror it looks like uh saku seems to be playing some sort of mid-range deck we see a peasant spirit poacher hound master shot and beast master beast stalker tavish 
And Judo Chop seems to have the Wild Spirits Infused package on the other side. And this looks very similar to what Judo played last week when I played them. It's a very aggressive style, kind of face, more face hunter, where you, from Sakusai side, we're seeing more of that mid rangey, um, almost like XL Beast, right? Yes. Um, and, and I, yeah. yeah. And pull from the spirit poacher there is going to get some tempo as opposed to that value later that's on judo chop side there with the stag stag was also like one stag. of yeah but probably a little less these days it was <laughs> one of the cards that got nerfed in that patch and we see just kind of not even value trading just train trade just so he doesn't draw more cards where i mean even that turn four damage is just four damage not going in the face exactly and one turn behind and with this uh with this uh, dormant minion coming back now, I think it's a little bit awkward because now Saku can just cash that 3-1 into the 4-3 and send this bigger 2-2 face and start racking up the damage. Hey, are you casting, you know, are you going doggy biscuits or are you just hero powering here? Oh, always like, the biscuit. I I ask just to make sure, but yeah, I think you always doggy biscuit, trade off your 3-1 and just go face. Exactly. It's just such a clean, clean line here. And then next turn, well, it would be nice to Theotar, but unfortunately for Saku, his hand is just too good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little... I, I mean, a 3-6 body against a, a kind of minion-heavy face deck is is just a lot. I mean, it, it can take two hits. It's a two-for-one. Um, yeah. There's just a lot. Definitely. So Shaw is not a bad play, and if it sticks around until turn seven, the value with the Hydralodon will be pretty massive. Oof. Great pickup with uh, Huntsman Altimore, especially with Hydralodon coming down on seven. That gives a pretty nice opportunity for Saku on eight to play Altimore and maybe get the entire pack. Yeah, we are seeing it kind of... Oh no 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 Saku, don't do it. I, <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's a play... I, yeah, uh, well, we'll see. Codobane is seems. I, I think strong. you take Codobane, but yeah, I think you take the refill. You're not happy to see any of these cards. Mm -mm. Now the thing with stack charges, it, it is a turn. Oh, you don't like well, giving any of these back. Well, Shaw's the one you want to send over, yes. <laughs> and I don't think you're that upset about it, but. If, imagine if it was Altimore, Hydralodon, and the uh, Beast Stalker Tavish. And that there was a good been... chance it would have been, right? I mean, like, yeah. it's, it's definitely yeah. risky play. When this momentum is now swinging back Judo's way, it seems like there's a pretty, pretty easy clear here. And Judo also could utilize the Spring Paw to get these uh, Frenzied Fangs infused right now, but... Instead, just elects to clear the board with Shaw, send it face. Pretty solid. I do like this because the bats now have rush coming, you know, as soon as yes. they're playing. The Lynx has already had it, but you're not really worried about that. But now you have to click clack and or whatever it is called. Yeah. Yeah, click clocker. Um, and nothing super easy here. I mean, like, Brack is five, fills the mana out. Yep. Um, Precedent does, himself. Does get full value out of it. Yeah. Yep. Nice pick up there. Uh, Stag Charge Wild Spirits looks like a great turn six if Saku doesn't want to go be Stalker Tavish. Yeah, it's one of those things, Tavish. I think if you don't play it now, like sometimes you can get caught not playing it because you have yeah. so many other good cards. But we'll see where the board state is. And here yeah. we see it just kind of coming down. Generally, too, Tavish is a card you want to play when you're either at parity or maybe just a little bit behind into small minions. Mm -hmm. And I think in this spot, it's just a little bit awkward since the Shaw will survive and the health total is a little too large. But still could go for the Explosive Trap. Maybe try to set up a Ice Trap or, some, or something else for next turn. The Rat King. Not a card I was expecting to see. <laughs> I have seen more of this in this style deck. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm a fan or not. I mean, it, it seems like it's okay. I, mm -hmm. It's never great. But yeah, the, the decision here, either Tavish or kind of splitting it up and going spells, 
I mean, the problem is there it's net clean, right? You have a five one, you're kinda of hoping to hit explosive trap and maybe Yeah. Yeah, there, you see the well, explosive there it trap. Is. It's great. Yeah. And I think personally, I'm a big fan of just getting my dormant things online as early in the game as possible. Mm, agreed. So yep. I, I think that line, both of this, this line, you know, not too bad either. I think the freezing trap might backfire just a bit in this spot. Could let Judo Chop buy back a threat, albeit on a very, very long countdown. Yeah, it puts the onus on your opponent to make the right decisions, which is, you know, the glory of secrets, right? Yes. Um, so the trap pops. Those minions are cleared up. And now that Shaw could be going back into the hand. Or this arrow on, which actually isn't all that important, but... Now, Auralon is a card that I'm still not a fan of, and I don't think that the numbers have really been phenomenal for it so far. Just, it is a lot of value, but the pace at which Judo Chop will be achieving it is glacial. It, yeah, it seems like it's a, it's almost like a borderline win more card. Yes. That you, you tend to win the games you were going to kind of, you're already ahead of anyways. But uh, now from Saku's side, we're going to see. Looks like he's putting down the Hydrodon. Just makes sense, kind of putting the creatures out there. Yeah. Um, Hydralodon, Rat King, Hero Power, both seem like good ways to spend the turn, but I like putting all these stats into play, as mm -hmm. well as clearing off the Sarolon. And notice, too, now that this Altimore will be infused if uh, these heads get cleared off. <laughs> and only cute. 17 on the other side, too, so we're getting in that dangerous territory. Exactly. For Judo Chop. And notably no wild spirits for Judo Chop, so not really a way to speed up these uh, dormant minions. Stag charge. Hopefully it is not the stag for Judo, and it is. Always stag be... for Judo. <laughs> That's a third Always one stag game. time. Uh... Right. It's like a Vicious Slither Spear could just be drawn immediately. Merlocula could be some life gain, but we'll see the Slither Spear just come right out. Probably a good call. And maybe that next card is helpful, but not not really the stuff Judo wants to see. Now it does choose to go for you know the card draw to draw more cards. Yes. You know, as his gets cleared out. So gives him a chance, but definitely behind the eight ball here. Yep. So we don't quite have a guaranteed lethal. Uh, Saku can set Judo to, to two. And the Altimore is lethal sometimes. One out of yep. three times, it is lethal on its own. So I think I like Saku starting the turn with the tracking, trying to see what that other option could be. And nah, it's always Huffer. That's lethal. Saku, <laughs> Saku knows. <laughs> well, well, Huffer played. High yes. rolling and going face. Much like my latter opponent, the Tavish hero power only produces Huffer. <laughs> and <sighs> well, well done for Saku for you know it won't call it a mirror, even though they're playing the same class of two vastly different decks, and you know, Judo just couldn't get ahead enough to kind of put that pressure down, and you know, Saku was able to turn the corner and just go face. Exactly. And it's interesting to see that build on Judo's side since normally in the lineups that would leave Rogue up, you would see a big beast hunter or mm -hmm. a deck built with a lot of taunts that can get in the way of the knife from Draka and the big Sinstone <laughs> Graveyard spirits. But Judo brought this Infuse Hunter, which means that he might be in trouble if he has to face off against Saku's Rogue. Yeah, and I don't know how much of that is. You know, let's let's talk about the five seed slots. It's one that I've I've been in now for three seasons, and and then again this year. And what we see is sometimes uh, they're individuals with great skill that just don't have a lot of time to play the ladder, right? And so mm -hmm. maybe they just don't have the experience with the rogue, and they're just kind of listening to their teammates. Um, so some of that could come into play here, where it's just they just don't have they're they're not playing every day on ladder grinding it like uh like you are at the toppest of the top well yeah well i think that that can be in part of it too and a lot of it also is comfort because 
like you said, maybe not playing every day. Some of these decks take a lot of time to optimize, and if you can't optimize them, it's better to just bring a deck that you know you're familiar with mm -hmm. and can pilot well, because usually that will lead to more wins. Absolutely. Right. And here we're seeing uh, an XL Mage versus again just running back that Hunter. Um, yes, and I think Judo's Hunter should have a pretty reasonable matchup into this. What? Looks to be big spell mage based on the mailbox dancer that has yep. appeared. And this is that XL big spell mage that we've seen um, popularized because it beats the mage mirror. Yes. Um, so, and the XL giving you the more life against the, you know, typically the more aggro aggressive decks. So, well, yeah. Let's have a little bit more game against Druid since the dragons are a bit harder to deal with and Suspicious mm -hmm. Alchemist. All right. If mind are, games, mind games. If you are Saku, I feel like Iceblood Tower is honestly not bad in this spot and it's the least useful for Judo. Absolutely. I, I, think, I think you have to, you know that the game plan for your opponent is to burn you in the face and any damage spells are just bad. And yeah. 10 mana is not that far away and you have ways to cheat it out. So right. I say Plus, just take it. Oh, Plus, the spells in your deck are huge, but we'll see if Judo can get this mind game right. 50-50. 50-50. Highlighting the siphon, though. Yeah. I feel like you just click the fireball. I think siphon's definitely the one that so Saku would have wanted to pick most. But, oh, oh, he picks right! Oh, Judo nails Judo it. Nails the mind game. Love it. Uh, see, and Saku. That's a threat. Yeah, that fireball is not good for Saku in Judo's hand. I mean, every hunter would love to have fireball in their deck. So yes, I I, I agree. <laughs> and now it's time to do some mailbox dancing. And those coins add up because you have Slither Sphere on the other side. It's, you're, you're just feeding your opponent uh, yeah. all, all the gas it needs. Yeah, I think that maybe bumping the minion could have been a good yep. choice there, but we'll see how Judo responds. It's uh, one drop into Biscuit. Always a good play. No, he does have a follow-up with double coin into um, the K9 and Tron. It's yep. Yeah, lot, I mean... But I like it. I think that it's reasonable tempo into this mage deck. You know that the mage is not likely to have a lot of counters to this. So... This K9 Atron could pick up a minion that's resilient or something good in the matchup. It looks like uh, it picked up Beast Stalker Tavish, so not really not really something to be too upset about if you're Judo. Oh, Snow Flurry is nice here. Yeah, this is a good good draw. Now, I mean, is this... You know, the other thing is you can maybe go into the Blade Master with the coin. It seems ultra-aggressive, but it puts a body in the board and makes your opponent think a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think that when you have such a threatening minion like the Slither Spear out, it's a little yeah. bit premature to do something like that. But I like this line here. Saku might be debating coining the Mailbox Dancer, but Lex just to let it be. And, and honestly, if you can get to that turn eight, maybe turn you know seven with you play this other Mailbox, you can roll the dice on a rune, right? So um, it's been known to have major comeback potential. Yes. Um, and Wound Prey coming out. Clean yeah. this up. Okay, Nanotron comes down, and there's a baddie, yes, so... See a, a minion dance. put into play. You know, oh, Watch Post is nice. Oh, that's good. You so, know, from, from a, a gauging perspective, Judo's kind of wanted, at this point, your opponent's going to turn four, kind of wanted to put at least ten damage to face. And we only see one, so we're a little bit behind the curve on the tempo that face wants to go um because you're giving saku the time to do these plays and build up the board and slow things down um and here are we thinking mailbox dancer into watch post or are we thinking one of the two in pinging off the four two i think and pinging off the four two is really important mm -hmm. so if i were in saku's shoes right now i would play this watch post ping down the four two and trade Dancer is also a consideration, but I don't want to give Judo Chop the ability to ramp into an Aralon, which is why I would hold it back. So, 
And since we saw the Aralon in the previous game, I would want to play around that here. Well, and the thing is, like, if you're if you're not going to ping it off, why not just trade in the two one? Oh, yeah, it's going to coin ping. Okay. Yeah, and I, I I see that Saku is like fighting for the board here as hard as possible, but mm. I think that this play might just set him further behind in the long run. And yeah. well, well, look at that. The watch post <laughs> gets it at least, so it can't happen this turn, but. That Arlon is now going to come down a turn or earlier because this coin is readily available. Yeah, and the thing is, is like by using the coin there for a slight, you know, board control, you really limit your ability to kind of push these major turning cards like Ruin, right? Like it, yes. it really limits kind of the options that are coming that you're hoping to draw from your deck moving forward. Right, and... I think now it looks like Saku's in a really bad spot, so we'll see if he can turn it around. I think this line makes a lot of sense on Judo's side. The bats are infused, so we'll have the two mana 6-6 six, six and the hero power. Keep the pressure up. I heard that's pretty good, two mana 6-6s. Six, I heard it's pretty strong. Judo is going to uh, coin for aggression here. I think uh, Judo may have forgotten that <laughs> Saku had spent his money already. But Okani comes down. And, uh... Counters minion. I assume the bats will just trade into it. But yep. <laughs> maybe maybe something happens here. Nope. Predictable. Uh, works out pretty well there for Saku. Now, do you fireball the 2-6? Or you just no. go... You, you, no. you ignore it, right? You ignore the 2-6 and you just go face and you just... Click the hero power button. Click the hero power button, squeeze the 2 in, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's the way to play the rest of the turn, surely. And Belinda is coming down now. Scam time. Now, these are two... That th This is two good draws right here. I mean, oh, yes. Belinda into Reckless is pretty solid. Yes, and Belinda herself is also a big threat. Uh, not super easy to remove. That fireball uh, might have to go into it. And the pressure Belinda creates also does a great job punishing a slow play like Aralon. So but I do I think like that, this. Yeah, it's easy clear and you're pushing hero power, right? Like it. Yeah. I mean, I think though that like that's a very winning situation for Saku since that damage is mitigated and now we get to see this Drake Fire amulet come down. You have mm -hmm. the Okani into the hero power to clear this 3-3 if Saku doesn't find Rush. Like, this is where Saku wants to be. Ooh. Those are not the dragons you want to see, though. No. I mean, Azure Drake is fine. Not ideal, but fine. And, oh, well, better. Nixia the Broodmother is a bit better. Yeah. And, yeah, now Saku can clean up this 3-3. And now uh, Judo's on the defensive. Not really yeah. an easy spot. And that, that the life threshold on Saku is still a little bit too high where you just can't kind of go over the top. He's right. got to deal with the board and, and buy some turns. Yeah, and I think um, that like we have to see the Beast Stalker Tavish here. But we, we don't. To. We see Aralon, yeah. and that is going to get punished. So Saku has these free trades with these whelps. Oh, um, Bammy helps later. We also could just see a Rune of the Archmage if Saku wants to go a bit aggro. Turn on that goblin mode and get in oh, there. Yeah, wait, hold on. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 plus 7 is 25. Yeah, I mean, you're three off lethal, right? Yeah. Also, and counting room. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's always lethal if you Rune, right? 100% of the time, yeah, every time. 100% of the time, every time. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the that, safe play the is definitely to just yeah. trade off, set up a two-turn lethal this way, but I mean, you're on stream, Saku. Come we on, have... where's the flash? There are, there are five viewers here right now, and those viewers <laughs> are demanding the rune of the Archmage. That's 500% more people than normally watch me play, right? So Yeah. Well, so Saku is going to set it up this way. Fireball for seven. Uh, I would just slam the trade, trade fire. There. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he will. 
I think Saku might have just got a little bit carried away with the intricacies of the turn, but it's going to be real hard for Judo to come back from this one. I think that maybe a Beast Stalker Tavish into a good roll on the hero power can help out a little bit, but tough to imagine a world. Yeah. yeah, tough to imagine a world where Judo can both stave off the aggression and make it till the end of and you know win himself as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, improved yeah, maybe ice trap here. Yeah, ice, ice trap's trap. probably the one you wanted to see before, but this freezing oh. trap is just so miserable into these whelps, and those aren't going to do it. So, no explosive trap is huge for uh, Saku, and I think that it just has to be Huffer. It's got to be Huffer. Yeah, got to go Huffer. Got to push the button. Got to push yeah. the button. Got to push the button, have it be Huffer. Ah, uh, Huffer. And of course, now got to clear the Anixia. Oh. No, 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 the big one. Oh, oh and mm. well, this should. Right, because notably this will make another whelp. So Judo Chop is just dead on board here if Saku plays around the freezing trap correctly. Yes. And again, we talked about it last game. You make your opponents make decisions and looks like Saku's going to make correctly right. test. Yep, and now it's lethal on board, so will Saku I don't think there's really a way for Saku to mess this up. So <laughs> never say never. <laughs> yes, I mean we always we've seen the disconnects on ladder. Everyone has that story where they're dead to rights and the the opponent just DCs. So Yes, but But no oh. BC DC. Canada's internet holds up and Saku picks up the dub. Awesome. All right. So, so now we're left with the rogue verse. And I mean, if you're judo, you're just kind of running it back and, and live and die on the, the hunter hill or. Uh... Well, I don't I don't know. I am not going to pretend that, you know, I know exactly what judo has in the bag for this last one. But I think that I'd be a little worried about bringing in the hunter into this rogue. Agreed. I, I think if you want to play for points, you're probably queuing mage, because if your mage is slow enough, your mage if your mage can slow down the rogue enough, it can it can maybe, um, it can maybe stop the rogue. I don't think, like it just depends on Saku's familiarity with whatever rogue deck he's bringing, uh, in the end. But at the same time, like the the rogue deck that's been pop that's been very popular has been played by so many players. The the like miracle thief rogue. It's it's called thief rogue on donkey, but it's more of a miracle deck. Um, that that uh mm -hmm. certainly has capability to do some crazy things. Um, if you know how to play it correctly. Yeah. Well, you have this great thief package of yes. uh, tooth of nefarian and wild bundle and maestro. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, it, I think we have the list, don't we? Let's see. Yeah, this is the straight, just tempo right. style, no thief. Wow, Saku brought Paladin. Nope, it is not. <laughs> and Judo at least has a pretty reasonable hand to start off. Uh, Amplified Snow Flurry is great for stopping yep. attacks with the Draco weapon. But Saku has the best opening hand card that Rogue can find, which is Shroud of Concealment. It is right up there with Edwin for the best card in the deck. So... Well, and I a tradable expect, turn yeah. one, right? So you can just yep. and dump interesting it to why do you keep it? So he keeps Maestra, and I think that the reasoning here is probably that this guarantees that Shroud uh, of Concealment does not draw Maestra. But you know, it's who's to say if any card in the deck is better than having Maestra in the hand right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will see. We will see if this was the play. <laughs> Baku does what? not trade. No. <laughs> Saku wants to keep the Paladin Illusion alive for just a little longer, but never worry. There is another tradable, so Saku can get the, all the discounts he needs. Is Saku going to play this Maestra on curve? I... Oh, no. I don't think Saku has played this rogue deck before. Buckle up, folks. We're going to game five. <laughs> this is my exact statement. That's why I said it depends on the ability... 
it depends on <laughs> a, a player's ability to like understand the, how the deck like how the deck goes. It, it to be honest, it is a very complicated. Like the deck is complicated. The first few turns, generally in a rogue, is trading your tradables to get your uh, null discounted Absolutely. to zero. Um, because yes. that way you can draw. Yeah, but you have zero mana nulls to play with. Um, specifically to play with uh, like Draka and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Yes, but notably now, Saku it's... cannot get his nulls to zero mana. He can get them to one at best yeah. if he finds both copies of uh, Tooth of Nefarian and is able to honorably kill with them. Absolutely, it, and so kind of this is the the game state that we have. Like, what? Obviously, it's a standard mage game plan. You want to kind of ramp up. You have a bunch of freezes, which we see in hand already. From the Rogue, how do you recover? Um, your pop-off terms are a little bit more complicated because you don't have the zero casting, cars, casting cost cards. Well, we haven't seen any discounts yet because I, there's no tradables yet. So Saku of... needs to start trading that cut list, trying to get discounts on these cards. And looking for zero mana cards and cards like Serrated Bone Spike that can give discounts. Mm -hmm. Because what yeah. Saku needs is to play this Draka. But on the other side, we see the solid alibi in Judo Chop's hand. I don't really know if this is salvageable. See, this Null is three mana. But Saku's just going to get punching in there with the Null. Yeah. <laughs> get him, um, Saku. So, so like a, I think a big way that Saku can win from here is... By sticking a massive Edwin, like that's how that's how this game plan has yeah. to go now. You have to stick the Edwin. Draka will take a very long time to play for a to have big weapon at this point. Um, I mean, infusing towards like trying to get like an infused door of shadow to get a super to get some couple of low costing cards to play with is a good plan. It you know we'll see how this plays out. It's not. I mean, obviously it's not over. Nobody's at zero mana, but. No, but it's really but hard the, because the this rogue doesn't have a lot of yeah. Because the rogue doesn't have a lot of inherent like board, like it can't fill the board very easily, right? Like you're not going to win with your nulls. Um, you no. want it. You don't. We don't see the location, which does help kind of pump out some decent sized minions. Um, you, yeah, you're going to have to go for that massive turn on Edwin and hope it sticks and just doesn't right. get locked out it's... through just freezes. Yeah. yeah, there's a ton of freezes. Wait, we already um, see the blizzard in hand as well. Yeah, there's there's blizzard. There's the other. We need uh, to go digging. Yeah, we need to go dig. We need to get, start trading. And mm. you're gonna have to use these doors without them being infused because you're never gonna get there, right? Like you just yeah. Well, we see a preparation. Though. That means maybe we can start an Edwin here. It's not impossible. The time though, we're so far yeah. into the turn. It's too late to do it with this turn. Yep. True. See the dagger mastery here. And Saka will just pass. <laughs> so and, I think, uh, yeah, from, from Judo's side, what's the game plan? How do you hit the face? I mean, yeah. at this point now, <laughs> Judo is winning the race. Rogue's big advantage or way to win this matchup is to put stats on the board early and put the other deck on the back foot. But they're actually not really the best at playing from behind when they don't have Wild Pod Null available. Mm -hmm. So Saku has an uphill battle to deal 36 damage to Judo Chop while also not taking all this damage that's incoming. There's a, you know, likely with no interaction, if they just ignore each other, Judo is killing Saku in two turns. Yeah. And Saku has to figure out how to stop that. And extortion is not a clean use really against mage because there's very few that actually have, you know, the three health to kind of right. cleanly get rid of it. And it has to be on damage. So you, really, yeah, it's, yeah. there's no I mean, great options. I mean, Saku just going Edwin here and seeing what happens is a reasonable plan. I agree. So we'll see. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going pretty heavy in on a Draka here. Looks yeah, like think that. Yeah. And this isn't a bad Draka. It's gonna have a decent, a decent size weapon. It won't be a, a extremely large size weapon, but it'll be pretty okay. Yeah, it's eighteen damage. Yeah. It does get in there. Exactly. And I do like the fact that I mean, Judo Chop kept the amplified snowman from the beginning yeah. for this play. Exactly. So 
definitely see some heads up play from judo just understanding the matchup and when look to see that kind of just drop down here yeah. freeze them out and then then you're looking at that's five eight nine ten right yep. or, yeah yep mm -hmm. So we see this, probably see the amplified snow flurry alongside the ping, perhaps. Yeah. You should. So, I mean. I don't, I, I understand, the, I understand the reasoning for this deathborn, but I, I, and I also thought about it myself of like, oh, hey, we could do a lot of damage, but there's, I think reasonably this taking, removing the extra two power it doesn't necessarily lose the game by any means, but the fact that now we're getting the extra damage and since Stone Graveyard is here, which you can, which probably want to play now if we're planning an Edwin turn in a couple of turns. Well, Edwin has to go right now. Yeah. Saku is out of time. Yeah. Because uh, these with Deathborn present a lethal. Oh, no. And he instantly oh. drew the And he drew the only card that doesn't work with the, in the scab, so that's... Gonna have to find. Wildfall is not gonna be cheap. Gonna, yeah. gonna have to. Gonna have to find like a shadow step here, essentially, oh. to get the get that Edwin back to hand. Otherwise, it's gonna die, and with it. Well, no, well, I think uh, right now, uh, Saku has to worry a little bit about dying because there is a potential lethal setup here with this uh, Gray Sage Parrot. If uh, if uh, judo chop sends all these skeletons yep. face before playing it's, it, yeah, he, yeah, he's got to make sure he attacks face first. Yeah, for sure. And also, it still has that back pocket amplified, mm -hmm. right? They can freeze and kind of just yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I not a little. This isn't terrible. I mean, it could. I... It got a. There's no way now we can't ping, but he is making well, a lot this more is... skeletons. Well, it puts Judah Saku to one and yeah. makes more skeletons. Yeah, but and and now I think. Well, it does give out though. The problem is that, that you give the ability because you're going to see scabs come down. You're going to see six go to the face. Yeah. Puts your well, opponent at eleven. Gives you well six health. Scabs right? graveyard and yes, you then, use scabs and you make a graveyard and yeah. you're hoping. Yeah, three you're minions. Hoping. Yeah, you're going. Well, this is if. Because Judo's gonna blizzard, surely, or it can also power it again. Yeah. True. It's very, That's very six difficult. Six is very, eleven. Very difficult eight, situation. four. It's it's this is a lethal setup. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It will almost certainly not be lethal from what we can oh, see in Judo Trap. Saku's hand, just but. gonna make a little too too stealthy. I don't necessarily. I like agree that. with it. Oh, you I, I agree with it. You have to play your outs. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. has to play those outs. Like this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it makes sense. He, he has to do it. No. Any any clear of the board though is not the best news. I don't know how much I don't know how much extra burn we're running from if we are Saku. How much we're running? Uh, like I guess we're running sinisters on top of the wicked stabs and the and everything like that. So uh, maybe like once wicked stab gets up a little farther in, gets up a little farther in damage. Maybe we get something. Once we, if like, I don't think we're living another mana, probably. No, this wicked stab has to clear the two three. Unfortunately for Saku. Yeah. For it's looking sure. pretty lights out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do you try to just buy yourself a turn, commit the wicked stab to remove the two three, or just because he. If you don't, it's you're dead, right? No, so, you have you have to kill this two three. So yeah, right. Uh, yeah, he's he's literally forced into it by the fact that Judo's hero power does two damage. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is, is, this is a reasonable spot to concede, but yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's guaranteed two turn lethal because Rogue doesn't have any more healing. And I don't think that Saku can well, establish a counter lethal at this no. point. I, I don't believe so, but you know, if we're working on the assumption that he hasn't piloted this rogue that often, maybe just getting a couple extra turns to see how it feels and draws out is not unheard of. Um, no, I don't know Very how much true. you can learn, but you know, you just kind of always just want to play it out. I mean, we should still have some tradables. I don't think there's anything that. 
could be gotten, but there's one tooth left, so you never know in the in the pool of discoverable cards or spells from another class right. that could possibly. I mean, if I mean, Judo Chop wants to play this completely safe, I think Solid Alibi Ping was the only play, but... Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it. Yeah, there you go. Gain some armor, Solid Alibi, discount some uh, your spells, and Ping Face. See? Yep. Oh yeah. Can't. No option. That's but... that's sad. No Wait, can up. he make a three casting cost? He, he could. can make his own. Yes. He could, well, he, right? He, he Attack. Can, he can. So he has to use the shadow step here, remove his own minion, and then find some sort of out that can help him live. Play to your There outs. is a way. Yeah. Yep. So let's see. So two Go face, shadow step, replay, sinstone graveyard, tooth it. And well, Saku will dishonorably remove himself from this game. And we'll move on to game four. I, uh, yeah, I, this is a, you know, kind of where, 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 where do you think um, this match is at now, seeing. The rogue being piloted and, and kind of the chances on both sides. I mean, you called it game five. We're gonna see a, a game five this this uh, this match. Are you still holding to that? Um, I I think that if Saku is not able to work out the play pattern for this rogue, then it's judo series to lose. It's this is not a deck that you can play like a normal Hearthstone deck mm -hmm. and just have good success. It you need to know the specific play patterns to win and. I remember when we were discussing comfort earlier, mm -hmm. I think that this is a deck it's safe to say Saku is not comfortable on. No, and you're going against a deck that it's not an autopilot in, in imp lock, but it is a very, I see a card, I play a card, I draw cards, I play more cards, I go right. face. A little bit more intuitive of a game plan at the very least. Yeah. So, but we do see the Draka in the opening hand, which depending on what the matchup is, may or may not be a, a good keep. We do see tradable. Sometimes that's good to kind of just keep your tradables or just dump everything to try to get the nulls. Right. I mean, the card you want to see most is Shroud of Concealment, and then after that, it's Edwin. Mm -hmm. So I think in this spot, if you're Saku, maybe keeping the SI Extortion and dumping the rest seems smart. All right, and we saw um, keeping the Draka, keeping the Extortion. Edwin in the hand, though, is important, and in this matchup can be a really big swing. In block and with the really coin. Yes. Yep. So hopefully Saku does not just Extortion this 1-3, or else uh be another long game. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think d trading this away, discounting, you're not really threatened by the one three. You don't need to clear the board. Exactly. You want to draw, discount your nulls that you're going to inevitably draw. I, I, and Saku's just not working it out. Tough, tough, tough spot there. Because notably, the discount does not carry over to the next turn. Unlike right. some discounts in this game. Um, Sorry, we don't have any ink. And we do see a big 2-5 on the other side. I like the graveyard, and you've already committed playing, so you're not getting any more discounts or your nulls. Kind of slamming mm -hmm. down the graveyard for your future turn. Um, yep. Is Hopefully Saku does not make the 1-1. One -one. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and then we see him from Judo, his um, 
seems pretty straightforward. I mean, what are you thinking here? I mean, you can actually play a bunch of imps with the flame imp and then trade away. You just keep it. I think it's a a very good. I think I I personally favor just going two drop one drop there. Yep. Yep. With, with the flame imp and just getting them out, but. Just going wide. I mean, the yeah. rogues have a really big problem with getting rid of wide boards, except for an eight cost scabs that bounces things back. Yes. And this matchup is one that Saku, I think, can win from this position. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing the snowball effect so, so much, but I think in, in two turns by turn five, we're going to see a good... If he can't control the board, it's going to start getting snowball -y pretty quickly. And we see the trade there. I don't really like that. I would have liked Edwin into Shadow Step, mm -hmm. but we'll see it, how. It, can you explain the interactions if you Shadow Step the Edwin prior to the buffs that the buffs stay? So it, it's very sim straightforward. So the, the buffs are removed when you Shadow Step it, as they would be for any other card, but the battle cry persists till the end of the turn. So... When Edwin goes back to your hand, it's a 3-3, three, three, but it will continue to receive buffs if you play the cards that it drew. Yeah. So it then is buffed in your hand, so you play it next time. It, in essence, keeps the buffs because it's in your hand at that point, opposed right. to just doing it last and then losing all the buffs those on the board. I've seen people do that, so I always like to share the knowledge. I appreciate that. All right, so it's do or die at this point for Saku. Ooh. I'm. You just you have to just Edwin and see what you get. Yeah, I mean, Bone Spike Edwin also is reasonable too, but. Think. We'll see Let's how Saku do the three two. It. Yeah, yep. there you go. But we'll see if Saku goes for the Edwin or makes a bit of a mistake here and plays the Shroud. Hopefully we see the Edwin and start racking up some big minions, but... Nope, it's the Shroud, and I think at this point it's game over for Saku. Yeah. Unfortunately, because we're going to start seeing the snowball the other direction. And maybe, you know, Saku having to do it this turn, right? Like you YOLO the Edwin. But unfortunately the shadow step doesn't it doesn't really do anything. That doesn't necessarily help. Yeah, there's not really an out from the spot. At this point the game is pretty over outside of something absurd off of Tooth of Nefarian that I can't even come up with. And at best, it just kind of resets the board state, and you've used a lot of your resources just to kind of get it back to a zero state, where we know imp block can just refill pretty quickly. Right. Although, like, notably in this spot, Saku could have, if he put up enough pressure, just counter swung here and won if he was mm -hmm. playing this deck to the best of its ability. It's such a fine edge of madness and genius, right? Of kind of yeah. having that just-in-time lethal. Yes. And, unfortunately, Noel is too expensive. Yeah. And looks like we will be seeing game five. It doesn't even swing the 3-3. Three, three. No, it's concedes. And now we're back to kind of Judo's aggro, you know, straightforward to pilot Hunter versus... Uh, a rogue deck that, I mean, at least we could say Saku's gotten a couple games on it now. Mm -hmm. um, but still doesn't, we haven't seen the uh, the optimal plays, kind of when to go for the Edwin plays, kind of setting up your turns, that this deck greatly needs. Yes. Let the hunt begin. Obey the will of 
Not a great hand for Saku here. Likewise for Judo, but I think Saku probably ought to keep the Sinstone Graveyard, maybe try mm. to get minions going to sort of counter Hunter's pressure. But for Judo, it's an interesting hand. Arlon normally is a solid card to keep in your opening hand, but not much else going on. And it's difficult to mulligan Murlocula and Barak Kodobane and hold on to a five drop. But Judo does that and seems to be Whoa. punished. <laughs> yeah, I think what we're seeing is Saku kind of just holding cards to for board control opposed to kind of setting up those uh, big turns. Right. So hopefully Saku will pass here, but I just, just don't think he's figured out how this deck works. Oh, we do see the pass, which is good. Yes. Knowles will at least be three mana. And would stay at three mana if he plays the Sin Stone to kind of prep, which right. I'll, again, hopefully just trade here. Hero power also is a good play. Yeah. But he plays the Sin Stone, and well, here we go. <laughs> oh. Go dig. Okay. Oh. I, uh, none of these are great. Um, no. But that Pretty just means the good cards are closer to the top, right? If we know they're not the bottom, they got to be close to the top. And you committed, so might as well just make a 3-3 on the board. Yep. And Judo's still finding things to do off the top, which is good for him. Unfortunately, it is the stag, which is the card you want to, the one you want to see least in this matchup. Mm-hmm. Really would rather see the 2 5 taunt or even just the 3 1 here for pressure. Draka, though, maybe next turn Saku can make something happen. And just, he's got to hold off, right? I mean, make discount now. So trade yeah. away and even just make a weapon, kill off a 2 1, right? Trade into the 2 2. And just have faith that your next turn you just dump everything to face. Right. And okay. And Saku's trading, but unfortunately, Saku is the one that needs to uh, kill Judo Chop here. Yes. And I think he set up too too slow of a clock for himself. That does trade off. I mean, that's four damage, right? Yeah. <laughs> Lost. J Judo basically just has to hero power here. Not much going this turn, which is good news for Saku, at least. And maybe this is this could be the turn for Draka. Preparation? No. No preparation. No nothing. Now, the question is, like... Extraction, do you just trade away or do you just get the extra three damage to the face because you know that's the only way you can win and just kind of start going? I mean, I think going, make face, a minion. For, going face for 12 and making a minion seems like the only out, so I would do that. Yeah. Let's see if he finds it. And not worrying about the extra stuff, but just go, 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 go. Right. Yeah. No, and we see the trade. Preparation means that we could get a Draka here. But does he see it with a discount, right? Yeah. A little tricky, because we would see the Sinister Strike, Preparation, Serrated, Bone Spike into the Draka would be the ideal sort of play here. Because I don't know if Saku really recognizes that he is the aggressor in this spot, or that he ought to be. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. I mean, especially playing on stream... Definitely, and now that Jack is impossible to play, and I think Saku is not not really in position to win this one anymore. It's definitely behind the eight ball. Probably see the uh, Aralon here from Judo. Yeah. No creature deserves to be king. Big setup. 
oh, we get a reset. So, okay. <laughs> so, if we... Well, it's doable. We can still do the same thing. Uh, no. Maybe. No, no. no. Saku, come on. So, no. No. Oh. no. And the problem, guys, is that the um, when you discount it, you're basically committing the serrated. And then if you're committing the serrated, you're committing the Necrolord, and you're committing it too soon. So you're not getting the full value on the weapon charges, which is why starting with that, it was not the optimal play. All right. Um, so we see probably want to see both Sinister Strikes here over the Tooth, but we'll see the Tooth. See a Sinister Strike. Sinister Strike, Sinister Strike first. At least try to squeeze out all the damage. Yep. See the Draka. And we'll see a Shadow Step, which I don't think is really good here. I think that you need to hold that Shadow Step and hope that your top card is Edwin. Yeah, because honestly, you're not getting enough hand refill to justify your bigger weapon. So, right. You might as well just keep the damage on the board. It's a. You gotta squeak out the extra three damage. And Beast Docker Tavish is going to be a pain here for Saku. Yeah. Multiple multiple secrets will really kind of throw a roadblock in there. Right. Thankfully for Saku, though, Judo probably picked two of the weaker secrets that were available. So, at the very least, Saku shouldn't be too hampered by those. Yeah. Explosive Trap kind of <laughs> stops the attack, but... Yeah, no, it doesn't... There's not really an out here anymore. No, there's. you just don't have enough turns. Yeah, Saku unfortunately just can't get there. And Judo Chop looks like he'll pick up the reverse sweep. Oh, solid performance. I mean, you, you you play your opponents. You have to play the decks that they, they pick up. And, you know, chose not to ban Rogue, which here is, the you know, the chess move of the week, right? Um, really the put Saku on the deck that he was not comfortable playing and paid dividends. Exactly. And, uh... Looks like here, uh, Judo, just, you know, sticking to what he knows, is able to get the job done. Awesome. Well played by Judo. Well deserved okay. after, you know, coming back in the second week, picking up the win. Um, gets points. Saku did get two points for his team, which is, you know, we all know points are very important for the yes. season overall. So a good 3-2. Um, so kudos to, to everyone. Um where does that put them? Were they the first to play in their match? They were not. So uh, Zyrella's Disciples already had mm. a pretty commanding 8-1 to one lead, and Judo Chop just expanded that lead, making it 12-3, to three, and I think which secures the win for XD this week. Great start. I mean, again, and, and the teammates are always happy to see that, right? <laughs> removes all the pressure. Uh, just like you started off us off strong this week at the 3-2. So it yeah. just makes it so much easier for the rest of us. Yes, it's uh, it always feels good to have big numbers about, right under your team name. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, are we getting Judo to join or is that a bridge too far? <laughs> And here he is, the man of the hour. Welcome. I'm like dancing over here, dude. <laughs> like, yo. Tell us what, what are your thoughts? I mean, you uh, walk us through it. Remember the first two games. I just remember. Oh, 
oh crap, I'm an O2. Like I need to get some points. Yeah. And um I I'm I'm looking up like like uh my odds against this this rogue and most most of it like I couldn't not one of my decks had I would say an advantage. Mm-hmm. It was like pity, pity the whole way. Like, um, yeah. But, but you I, did it. You pulled it out. Um, yeah, kind of Denkus. What was your what, what was your opinion and kind of what what did you see from the match? So yeah, I think that the big takeaway here, judo, is like you brought decks that I think you're pretty familiar with and were played pretty well. And Rogue is the new hotness, and I think Saku just. You know, is a bit overwhelmed, and I think you did a good job of applying pressure and you know making Saku play his deck in you know the best way he could. And you know, I think you were really strong in your plan, and you know it exposed the weakness in your opponents. And I think you played it great. Yeah, I mean, I submitted Rogue as well, and um, it was pretty pretty similar deck to what Saku was running, and it got banned, but. I I was like practicing with that deck beforehand and I was misplaying left and right like you know because I'm I'm not the quickest draw so mm-hmm. like some of those you know um like I would I would play like a bunch of bunch of spells and then miss the ghost you know mm, yeah so little things like that and so I, when he banned my rogue I was actually kind of happy <laughs> well you know funny how that works out i mean sometimes you got to bluff in card games and i guess sometimes you bluff in deck selection too i mean you gotta br- <laughs> you bring you bring the best deck and you know it's threatening they gotta worry I mean, about it, it, yep. it, it there's i brought the the spooky mage i guess mm-hmm. and um you know uh, even my team was telling me play big mage and yeah. and I'm watching I'm watching uh Masters Tour and they're they're playing Quest Hunter. And mm-hmm. I'm like, should I do that? And I'm like, no. I'm gonna stick to what I'm familiar with. Yeah, and I think it was a great call. I mean, it, it, you know, especially when it comes down to it, you play better with decks that you fully understand. And often these games come come down to a one turn decision. And you just have a more knowledge and a more comfort level to make those correct decisions. And I think um, this match was a great example of that. Uh, you piloted it well. And, and personally, it's great to see you pull off this win this week. I know we had a rough week on, on week one, but, you know, it's great to see you see you win, pull out the victory here and, and kind of have a solid start to the season. You get, you know, the full points and. Yeah, you know. I mean, literally, it was impossible for me to. Uh, when week one, because yep. I brought two mages. But luckily, <laughs> yep. that, you know, that was against did. me. So yeah, I remember. It, yeah, it, it, yeah, It's definitely but, glad to, to see this week go better for you, and you know, always exciting to see you see you play and do well on stream. Yeah, I mean, it, I remember I was like, wait, how do I ban again? <laughs> like, it, it, I don't know. It's just uh, this was, I think, my third season of THL. Yep. So, you know, you know now starts are hard. Yeah, you, yeah, getting the hang of things. You're in the flow of things. So great win, great way to uh, wrap up your your week here, and great way to to lock out the, you know the win for your team for this week. So, uh, congratulations. Go enjoy the rest of the night, the rest of the weekend, and mm-hmm. um, look forward to having you on stream next time. Yeah, absolutely. I w- I'd love to be a guest, a host, or uh, co-caster, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, awesome. um, um, I'm totally a for THL. Like, I would, I would wrap it around my car if I could. Awesome <laughs> to hear it. <laughs> Love it. Love All it. Right. Well, appreciate it, Judo. Have a good night, crew. You too. And it would not be a Friday night fight without a reverse sweep from Judo. I've seen that a lot more times now than, you know, you would normally for the reverse sweep. So he's got that clutch going. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, 
I, I love the enthusiasm. One thing about, you know, the THL is like, you know, so often we get caught up in optimal plays and, you know, the best of this, best of that. In, in, in reality, a lot, a lot of THLers, they play because this is their escape and this is their chance to kind of get away from the, you know, the regular grind of the nine to fives. And it's just, it's awesome to talk to people that share that love and, and just the positive experience that even win or loss that the THL, THL brings. Which is great because we have another match coming up. Um, so what is what does match two look like? The Dankus of all dads. What what do we got for us? So we've got two guys who, to be quite frank, don't really belong here. In the three <laughs> seed, we have Trito two and Jespin going up against each other. And knowing both of these players, hard to believe that they are only three seeds. Trito is already qualified for Masters Tour six and. You know, Jespin has been killing it with the ladder and often on the leaderboard this season. And, you know, both of these guys are practice up and uh, ready to get that dub. So should be a really, really high level match for, you know, the th- especially for the three slot. I'm excited to watch. Absolutely. As we look at these lineups, I mean, we, we do see they're both bringing Druid. They're both bringing Rogue and they're both bringing Mage. Uh, the only difference is that Atrito is bringing the Priest. Where and Jespin is bringing the warlock, um, and we do have the information. I think the bands come in and it does look like a double rogue band, mm-hmm. um, which makes total sense. So, kind of looking at these, the remainder three, you know, kind of run that, run down this lineup for us. All right. So, looking at this, it's actually kind of an interesting mind game here because with rogue out of the way. Trito is probably pretty incentivized to bring some aggression into this druid. Naga Priest is a problem for druid. Beast Druid, problem for the traditional ramp druid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jespin on the other side has the imp block, possibility of a beast or token druid. And in this close of this format, once you see your opponent's classes before you finalize your decks, uh, You know, all bets are off. And I think that whoever sort of gets the better of this mind game and has the right read on whether their opponent is going either aggressive or slower is going to come away with this win. So, yeah, but I'm not really sure what to say. I know Jespin, from what I've seen, has tended to gravitate toward aggressive strategies, but... You know, maybe Trito knows, maybe he knows Trito knows that there can be levels to the mix up and it's a tough one. But if you're just going by the best deck for each class, you probably have a ramp druid, a big spell mage, and then the Naga priest with the rogue ban. You would expect quest if rogue was left up, but since it's banned, I think Naga is a bit of a foregone conclusion. Yeah, and, ge- yeah. Uh, just real quick with, with the Naga play, I mean, we have been seeing that the more the aggro druid kind of come in popularity a little bit i mean do you do you think there's any chance they bring out just a a more aggressive lineup i think it's possible and while the aggro druid i don't think is favored into the naga priest i think it has a better chance than the ramp druid Mm -hmm. so that might be kind of a way to sort of mitigate that risk Trito also could bring what be bringing one of the new priest lists i don't know if you're familiar with this kodamora but there is a uh the last priest popularized by Dravo that's been popping off on ladder is a really interesting deck. That's the miracle style. Let's play all the cards, make everything super big and just kill them in one turn kind of thing. Exactly. I like it. I like it. Because it turns out that making a 25-25 taunt is pretty good. And that's usually enough to get it done. I've heard 25-25s are pretty good. Yeah. No ancient one, but it's close. <laughs> it is close. It is absolutely close. And you know, personally, I, I do enjoy seeing Priest back in the meta. I mean, it's uh, you know, back in the old days, it's it's it was the first class I got golden. I and it's it's seen its ups and downs, but I'm definitely happy to see Priest back in the mainstream. Yeah, me too. I can say for sure that Priest is my lowest win rate class, but. You know, I love it even if it doesn't love me back. And I'm happy to see it here. <laughs> awesome. Looks like we are jumping in. Yep. Let's see. Hey, 
And it looks like Trito's going to be first to spectate, so yep. Trito will be on bottom. Jespin will be on top. And it looks like here we can see that Trito is on the standard wig priest with Justin, Jespin on ramp druid. So uh, I think uh, with this opening hand especially, I like oh. Trito's odds. Yeah, this is... Uh, and then the hand made in for the refill. This yeah. is pretty... Double wig would, only, would be the the only really improvement I could see. Yeah. Um, Jespin, though, on the other side, also has a pretty good start. Pretty good start. You know you're going to, you know, see the, the rigor come down. Um, it's going to see the ability to ramp up into an eight drop, right? So it'd be pretty interesting yeah. to see here. Yep, yeah, and I like here Trito, too, can also go for a double wig this turn, which I think is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So... Likely, we'll see here the Jerry Rig come down, probably pick up the Nourish, as you'd expect. Might be that this is the token build with Sire, so maybe it could be picking up a Flipper Friends or a Living Roots. Mm -hmm. Let's see. But I, I mean, think it's also, always... Yeah, I think it's always Rigor here, but there was some thought about going Seedman to get some challenging things on the board, right? Well, there's no Wild way to do Growth it. and Seedsman. It still yeah, Wild Growth and Seedsman. Yeah. So... Jespin is going to elect to take that line, it looks like. And I think here, with nothing to contest the board, I like going wig, coin, scribe, wig, and just getting it going. Mm -hmm. This is this seems like just such a gasoline situation here. Let's see if Trito spots it. Uh, oh, yeah, he's doing it. Yeah, it seems like a pretty straightforward. Yep. Trito is getting in there. And the all, the, all the hats you can have. Yep, and, put all the hats on. And it looks like uh, Squishy is working too. These uh, Nagas are going face, and uh, Jespin's in a tough spot. Seedsman picks up another Wild Growth. Doesn't really give a good spot for next turn, though. Oh, Radiant? Oh, oh no. Handmaid and Cathedral are both great here. Yeah, I like putting the you know the cathedral down because it has you know future effects, right? The sooner you get it down, the sooner you get to refill it. Yeah. So I like to play it now, and then you can play had me and activate the wigs. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of not a fan of that value trade there on Trito's part. I think that just going face makes a yeah. lot more sense. But now, uh, still a hard spot for oh radiant. Okay, here we go. It's game time. Another radiant is here. Pelagos? Oh. oh, no. All the Shit. cards. <laughs> Pelagos, Devour. Next turn, uh, it's popping for Trito. Yeah, and it, yeah, like you said, it, it, this is the dream start. Um, really what the deck wants to do. And again, just... Oh, okay, nope. I thought he was going to value trade there for a second. I was like, oh. No value trade, but... No value notably, trade. <laughs> no scale of Anixia here to punish this. Uh Jespin is the first druid I've ever seen not to have Scale of Anixia available on Curve. So a little bit unfortunate. But seems like here uh, Trito will just get to continue this value train here with maybe a big Radiant Elemental setup. Milkwood Growth does put a big minion on the board. It does, but Oh, it we do see the Starfish, though. Yeah. Well, if there is a boon of the Ascended in Trito's list, that Starfish isn't going to matter. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's very important to note. Another and, and explain pickup. why it doesn't matter. Why doesn't because the Starfish the matter? The Kyrian token that that boon of the Ascended makes is not, it or has the base stats equal to what it comes into play as. So even it if you were to silence it with Starfish, sure, it would lose Taunt, but notably it will still be very strong. And this is lethal, so, and you this know. this should be just straight lethal. <laughs> Sometimes <you> know, lethal. <laughs> yeah, Radiant Elemental, Pelagos, we're popping off. But anyway, we're not going to need to know about this Boon of the <laughs> boon of the Ascended interaction. The Kyrian keeps its stats, whatever. Jespin is dead. And on to game two we go. All right, well, we saw Naga get the win here uh, in just early threats. Was able to had had the the wigs early, drew the cards he wanted, and never really missed a turn. Um, and if you, that's how you beat ramp, is you just you beat them before they get going. So yes, uh, that is. 
I will note that this is Hero Series, by the way, for everybody who doesn't know, this is LHS. So Jespin's Druid is gone, and Trio yep. will continue on the Priest. That is good to know. It does change our analysis a little bit. So we will need to know that boon interaction here. Mm -hmm. But let's see what Jespin has going in this mage. And it looks like it's Big Spell Mage, which traditionally has been a... Oh, boy. Jespin, oh. I love it. Notice there that your viewers at home, that's a big game hunter over there in Jespin's hand. How old? Think, uh, is, is this 2015? What is this? Oh, man. Jespin. Jespin's come with the hard counter, but one thing to note is that with Pelagos, this uh, this Naga Priest can get off to a lot hotter starts a lot more quickly. Mm. And sometimes even the big spell mage can't quite weave in their uh, weave in their disruption before the Nagas can just go off. Yep. We do see a slightly slower start. Um, and we do see the snow flurry. The M Flight Snow Flurry does basically have a pocket kind of one turn stall um yep. it does challenge the board yeah i think here i'd like to see the tree uh, trito develop the radiant elemental and get that going with the vicious slither spear mm -hmm. but instead we're just going to see this sort of more passive approach here and uh night cloak sanctum is into theater oof jespin has yeah. uh, got all the tools He's got double 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 sanctum, so I mean, really kind of locking things down. Theotar is yeah. great. We see the magister in hand, right? This is yeah, and Jespin also has the option to clear off the slither spear, which he takes, and uh, it's looking to be pretty hard to come back from. Pelagos will show up, and uh, Okay, I, I want to know how Trito's going to react to this <laughs> big game hunter coming down and clearing off this Pelagos. Is it okay to concede at that point? I think it is. Is it honorable to do so? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant technology oh. here. Oh, yeah. And I think uh, I think Trito is going to have to be carted out of uh, carted right out of this game here. I don't know if you can really recover from that. That's such the, a major swing. The board swing and the emotional damage are very high. And it's a bit of a difficult one to just like, you know, really, There's... really make something happen from like, I, that's a big game hunter. Like, uh, the only thing can... that'd be bigger would be another big game hunter, but there's oh. no way he runs two. Yep. Uh, misses the wig, unfortunately. <laughs> but now uh, Jespin has complete information on Trito's hand. Mm -hmm. So pretty valuable. I'm guessing he'll probably snag that Radiant Elemental. Radiant's good. Also, I mean, yeah, I think Radiant is the correct play. There's some thought around School Teacher just because it's extra value drawing cards, but definitely get rid of the Radiant for the pop-offs. Yeah, then why don't you send over a Reckless Apprentice? Uh, <laughs> it's does pretty nothing. great to give away <laughs> in this matchup. I don't know if uh, yeah. Jespin was quite aware, but sending over the minion that heals your whole board and face for two is uh usually a good call yeah absolutely so looking here makes sense to clear off the minion use the freeze i guess it's two for one value the big game yeah. hunter got well interesting uh still i think a line that works but Jespin seems to be valuing reducing the health on the Murkwater mm -hmm. Scribe, knowing that the Bless is in hand. Yeah, just keeping the health to health totals low. So just, you know, the big turns are just a little bit harder um, to get to, and especially knowing the Bless is there. Yep. Uh, Whispers of the Deep could be interesting here. Uh, good uh, way to break the freeze, get a little bit of damage on the minions before you play the wig. I don't think the other spells are particularly useful in the spot. Yeah, I was like, is there way? Is there any reason to dredge anything to discount? I don't think so. Oh, so, Jespin will whispers onto the four three for more damage as opposed to breaking the freeze, and uh, get some. Or Trito will excuse me, and Trito gets the damage in so. 
on the board, but it's not going to get any easier. Yeah, part of the problem is that now you're getting into the turns where Mage wants to, to play, right? A lot of the deck is just about getting to this point of the game, and now we're there. Yes. And so we're going to see Magister. It, yeah. Also, uh, the interesting spectator bug is still going on. Uh, we here cannot mouse over and see that Radiant Elemental in Jespin's hand until he does. So uh, if any of the viewers <laughs> want to read it, uh, they are out of luck. That Radiant <laughs> Elemental will be protecting its mysteries. <laughs> I didn't even notice it, but, you know, playing Priest like you, you and I do, we, we were very aware of that card. Um, okay, so Cathedral here into a boon might be the best bet. I like buffing up this Murkwater Scribe and making two large threats. Slither Spear. Uh, I think this is a bit of a slow line from Trito here. I think there's the assumption that there's no freeze available for Jespin. It well, it does play yeah that and it plays around Reckless though because right because you only have two damage on. Right, but I think power. making another eight attack threat is really huge. Yeah. Uh, I like the light it burns. Drown is also very good. And uh, we see the bless. Trito is a uh, going face. He's just going for it, you know. And uh, interesting though for Jespin because if I'm in Jespin's spot, I wouldn't expect the bless, but he does. Jespin's a Jespin's a pro. We're two for two tonight on, on the guess. I, I guess uh, I, I I am not very good at predicting these. I guess I uh, <laughs> I'm lacking a bit in that department. And Jespin's got a really good setup here for this Reckless. And unfortunately, uh, this Bless is not looking so hot here in, uh, for Trito. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have the optimal targets for it. And then not a really good way to gain a bunch of life or health back yeah. on his min minions. Yeah, Treasure Guard helps, though, at least. It's and, a good starting point. I think yeah, you maybe commit. Do you commit now? I, I don't think you commit anything, but we'll see it. And he's, yeah, there's knowledge I mean, that there are two blesses in hand, so it's not like he's tricking anybody, but I kind of yeah. like this. At least get something out there while you know you can. If not, um, Jespin's shown that she's going to kind of keep the health in check, so maybe this was just... Yeah, I, I think, though, that... I would want to see the bless with the boon of the ascended paired just to make sure that though that attack stat is getting copied over to something else. Mm -hmm. And this is a pretty all in play from Trito because if Jespin has the tools on his side to remove this treasure guard, there's no gas left in the tank. Yeah. And unless one of the two cards is drawn is like a handmaiden or even then no way to play it. Trito just, is really in a bad spot if the treasure guard is actually cleared. Freezing it, though, notably, is okay, because you still can churn out a very large Kyrian. Oh, we don't see the commitment to lowering the attack on it, which is... And he's not going to run the Reckless into it? Right. Could... Jasmine's probably mulling over using his own bless to make a 7-7. Seven, seven yeah. And set the 2, which I think is actually a pretty nice idea. Now, Murloc Holmes. All right. Were you paying attention, uh, Kodomora? <laughs> nope. It was... Uh, and then we knew that in the hand is... Well, we know this one's pretty easy. Yep. I don't and... know if that one's easy. Oh. No luck. Oh, it always feels bad at the end. Oh and boy, that, that's ooh. that's actually incredible here. This is going to be quite a large Kyrian. Probably see that get traded, maybe. Just going face and saying, if you don't have the freeze now, you don't have it next All turn, right. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, use that bless. Come on, Trito. Oh no, Trito's a coward. Curious why that trade was at the end, but yeah, Ordering uh, a little bit if better. either of these wait, is this oh. no, 
There's, well, there's the starfish, but it's got to be rune because starfish doesn't get it done. Because it's as from hand, yeah, right. Starfish and all trades into it would work, but starfish alone isn't good enough. We'll see if uh, Jespin knows this interaction. But Ruin always wins. Ruin's always lethal, so... It's true. Snap Freeze hits the Kyrian. Only three mana spent so far, and it's been a good investment. Ooh. Overflow. Oh, into the Kyrian. Overflow oh. again. Into the Treasure Guard. First Flame. Great Ruin. Ah, uh, stellar. Always lethal. Brutal. Oh. oh, that's... All right, well, time to see if the school teacher can maybe produce a comeback. Identity Thief, wait a minute. Oh, wait uh -oh. just a minute. Oh, wait, he, he didn't take the identity theft. Treat out, no. Come on, there are viewers here. Do it for the content. <laughs> Dude, always for the content. Trito will pop off the wig and not clear. Oh no, I think uh I think this one might get away here. Wait. Well, there's always the blessing hand, which is always something. I mean there's Okay, I have a lot of questions <laughs> about this big spell mage. I think that this Gorlock Ravager might have slipped by us a little bit earlier. Oh, that, I didn't even see that. <laughs> that, that. That is a card that is there, which it's a bit atypical. Pr almost certainly. It's probably yeah. mutinous, uh, Finley, and... Yes, but yeah. maybe more? Maybe Mir Miracula maybe for the more. life gain? Could be. Uh, Amalgam of the Deep? Yeah. Suboptimal, I think. It's a different package a little bit. But, um, you know, this is Hero, and if this is meant to be a counter, then might be some very good reasons for it. But that's a five health minion on the other side, which is going to go down to one health because he's going to ping it. Or she's going to ping it, correct? He. Nope. He? He? Yeah. He. he. Sorry. I mean... Freeze, is it? Yeah. All right, so... Had Trito gone for Identity Thief, he probably could have picked up another Bless even, which is mm -hmm. pretty <laughs> funny. All right, wig time. It is time to wig out. Card draw? No chance. Come on. Oh, Focus Will. No, it's too late. It's too late because they already, they already committed. But I, still, I still think you do it, but you've already committed a... Well, you don't go Focus Will here. I like this setup, but... Identity theft could be humongous. Because there's going to be a Radiant, possibly. It's not, but Gorlock Ravager might be, have Trito. <laughs> what? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know it. where I'm at anymore. I do not know where I am at. <laughs> Is there is there something that I'm just missing on what Mutanus really doesn't do much because there's no. Well, but why did Trito pick the Gorlock? Yeah, I don't. That's <laughs> he what did I'm it for the like, content, what, man. <laughs> Yo. Because he, he was afraid that you know Jespin would go dig for their Mutanus, but again, I but it doesn't take it because he could still. Do, I don't. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think this was a funny haha -ha from Trito. Trito works in mysterious ways. Maybe just trying to get another wide board, right? Like just another minion to put down, because there are no minions. So does how has he? How many amalgams has he played? Because this will obviously draw amalgam. Yeah. Well, from what I've seen in the tracker, we've seen one use so far. Oh, okay. So this one just draw the other one, and then that would be something to trigger wigs. Right. I don't know. So it is Gorlock mutinous. Finley, so makes sense. You can draw Finley, refill your hand. I can see why Jespin's running the card. Trito picking it, though, is pretty fire. I'll be yeah. honest. Starfish, huge. Varden, huge. Into the snap down that's, Varden, so that that blocks him out. That, that should a, be it. That's a gate. Oh. Well, yeah. it's not over until it's over. It and there's the amalgam. 
No, this is there are comebacks from this spot. Oh, okay. We need to see. Well, he he doesn't rip the Drake fire. Oh no! Come on. <laughs> Who's content? What content are you looking for here? Well, at this point, he's dead to he's just dead to any trade plus plus Mordrish, and you could be thinking. I I mean, I'd be like, oh crap, my opponent just got Mordrish. Like this is bad. You did see a bunch of cards already. Um... Yeah. Well, yeah. Trito's out of here. I feel right. like the Drake fire is like the only like sort yeah, of Yeah, I think out. you're right. I think you're right about that as well. But you know, there's that Mordrish is not given knowledge on Trito's side. It but is true. Might, have been, we'll see, might uh, have been a hunch. Who knows? Could have been. And we'll see now what uh Trito is packing on the other side now to answer yeah. this uh For big sure. spell mage. For sure. Right. And looks like uh, the answer is the problem. We're going to see the big spell mirror. And we'll see if Gorlock, Ravager, and BGH are that secret tech that can get it done. I think it's pretty, aw pretty awesome that uh, Jespin would likely have lost that game if he was unable to BGH the Pelagos. I agree. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, we do have a mage mirror here now. It's looks like a double big spell mage. So it'll be interesting. There's definitely a couple of swinging factors uh, in this matchup. Um, uh, an early Belinda from a player can really do some damage. Um, or if the person on the coin is able to kind of get Belinda, which we see Jespin get. He has Belinda in hand. So likely seeing Belinda on five, but we'll see how the early turns play out. I guess this solid alibi shows that Trito is actually just on the Rune of the Archmage version of Skeleton Mage, oh, okay, more likely gotcha. than not. Gotcha, yeah. Based on this mulligan, so... Yeah, for sure. It seems now like it, it's not a mirror after all. I was incorrect. So... Trito will offer his Amplified Snow Flurry to the Pelican. And... Mailbox Dancer is here to parte. All right. Funnily, though, these runes of the Archmage can be a bit of an issue for for you know Jespin's uh, bullet, for Justin's uh, barbaric uh, sorceress could be a bit of a problem there. And what's your take on kind of the over over specialized tech cards versus kind of a straightforward? I think yeah. that if there's any format for it, Last Hero Standing is is one that really incentivizes it. Between the fact that you can bring in your deck to counter a specific known deck on your opponent's side, and the fact that it's closed list just leads to so much opportunity for sniping off specific things that I think it's worth it. So, mm -hmm. you know, Jespin, knowing that Trito had brought the Priest... I think was pretty smart to slot in cards that specifically hose Naga Priest. Yeah. And yeah, it definitely it got the win, so it paid off. Oh um, yes. I've heard right. coin blend is pretty good. That it is, especially when it's on turn four. <laughs> Cause turn five you get to play some big stuff. Uh, yeah. your opponent. Well, Trito's got the tools. Mm-hmm. Because we could see a solid alibi here. It's a good, great spot for it. Are, are you more concerned? Could... Would you save the solid alibis till after you see the inevitable, at least dragons for one turn? Because it's okay to take nine. Yeah. You're, you're you're okay, right? Oh yeah. It's more of the question if you value the mana that you save by doing the solid alibi now, since you'll have the zero mana flurry later. Mm. Or if you think that the solid alibi overall is just a more valuable tool if you can't clear. And I think that Trito seems to believe that clearing is going to be a challenge. And with this hand, I don't blame him. I think that's very valid. And not not the biggest dragons we've seen on the other side. And kind of deciding, is health better than damage? And choosing yep. one damage there, knowing yep. that there's only four coming back the other way with the other one. Yeah. And I think here we'll likely just see the blizzard. Just stall this out. 
Now, one thing that's awkward is that this Varden or Magister Dongrath can't easily come down in the situation. I know that uh, Jasmine is just going to rip this parrot and make some more dragons. And if the Dongrath doesn't hit the blizzard, Trito's in some trouble. And you really want to play it on curve, but Ooh, little Dongrath is here. Uh, Trito's just going to rip it. Arcane Intellect. Blizzard. Uh, Trito's a gamer. And still has the Amplified Snowman effect on the hero power, too. So, yes. Just going to yeah. bump it, take, not save it. Yeah, just go. Take it out. Yep, six. So now there's an answer to that, Belinda. And uh, all of a sudden, it looks a lot harder for Jespin. <laughs> yeah, because already had the pop off. We see the bronze. I mean, Akani can. It's going to come well, down. Well, this Akani just. Steals the hero power. Which is, I think, a little bit of a problem. We could see Okani, Deep Water Evoke, or Hero Power onto the Okani, the Evoker, mm -hmm. and the Solid Alibi. It's like a nice way to spend the mana, preserve the Varden Dongrasp, get a little face damage in. Yeah, Reckless like Apprentice that. off the top, though, would be pretty wild, but no such luck. Mm -hmm. So the Okani is uh, defeated. Shivering Sorceress. Yep. We are going to see the commitment of the Varden here. And I think this is just really to put another minion down to have swings back, right? To kind of start putting that pressure backwards. But I definitely see the the value of saving it for later and then getting the solid alibi in now. Yeah, I think that they were just, with the solid alibi, Trito had more mana to work with and could have gotten a bit done. Mm -hmm. But this line still works out, and I still like Trito's position. Yeah. Think so that that... But hey, Rune of the Archmage can make anything happen, and you know, not much stopping uh, Jespin from letting it rip. So we'll see the Gorlock Ravager. And nobody has locked his locked the board now, right? So. Yes. It is a dangerous spot to be in when you can't reliably get rid of and make space. Um, yeah. And there's another wildfire. Can get this hero power up to nine damage. But I think at this point, Trito should just race. Right? If you if all mm -hmm. of this goes face, that's ten damage. Uh, wildfire, hero power, solid alibi. Not a lot of outs there for Jespin. Trito rips the rune, though. I don't think he spots that. But uh, Deathborn comes out, Wildfire, Ooh. Arcane Intellect, Frozen Touch, Flame Strike. Well, <laughs> sometimes you just get the easy clear. <laughs> some, sometimes you're gaming. <laughs> Trito is a gamer this time. Yeah, just, this, yeah it's, it's surviving the, the pop-off turn of Belinda and then just turning around, keeping calm. Uh, Trito yeah. really put in on a clinic of, of how to play the mage. Under duress. Yeah. So just just so we're all clear here, Trito, for you viewers, had an almost guaranteed win in li line to win the game from that position and instead opted to go for the rune. That's the content that yeah. we're here for. He's he's a, this Friday. dude's just pulling out all the baller lines. Yes. Big baller lines. Big baller lines. Clown <laughs> clowns are watching from somewhere. Yeah, we've got two clowns. We've got two current clowns players or players who are playing for a team with some clowns on it and you got me who's a former clownstone academy member all right so it's war warlock for jess against the mage it's looking like a curse imp block yeah so this uh the curse imp block is one that's been getting popular i know that uh genji actually won a community gaming tournament using a similar list and mm -hmm. i think jespin has uh, caught on to the wave <laughs> I definitely like this this deck, this kind of mutation of the deck. I think it's uh, it gives you outs, it plays early, but has a long term threat. I definitely like it. I agree. I know that my my personal evaluation is that I found it could be a little bit slow into some of the decks with a lot of face pressure, but you know it does as long as the imps can get out early and apply enough pressure, then you win a lot of games. It buys time. 
it right. definitely does the things it needs to do. We see the right. first curse hit, and... Yep. That Deathborn's a little slow. See, Trito probably ripped this tempo brand. I really like the play. And... I like this. This force is a pretty awkward turn. Jespin is able to clear the brand, but not really in an efficient way. Just forces a very slow turn that lets Trito kind of reset the clock and get pressure going again. Oh no, the brand is sticking around. Oh, ballsy. Oh boy, Savara. Definitely scary. Um... So we'll see the Reckless here and then Trito gets the clear. And I, I like this a lot. Trito is just racking on the pressure, taking out this minion, and now, once again, Jespin is in a spot where there is not a clean clear onto this brand. And if, yeah, say, it, Trito were to draw Wildfire, then I think it's lights out. Yeah, and there's really, from this, this, this lock version, there's really not a massive way to kind of refill the board. At this point in the game, you want to transition really more into how are you going to finish them off with the curses. Now, Solid Alibi works very well against curses, correct? Right? No, so it does not work at it all. It doesn't? Okay. I, so I've not the curses this go, yet. The curses go off at the start of your turn. Oof. Okay. So, so, all right, we see a little disconnection. Uh-oh. No, all right, not. now, Trito, if you are an expert, you will not play this curse. Trito played the curse. So this Savara is dead in hand. Please do not play the Savara and curse yourself and lose the game, Trio. Oh, no. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's all just pay careful attention to that and keep it in mind. Oh, well. Oh, there is an Alexa device in my house that has something to say about my opinion, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alexa always has opinions. All right. Oh, Alexa, think, see, Alexa be people talking a lot. Yes. We do see a farm that does fill. Do, is that board kind of refill, kind of re-put the pressure back on, and we don't see a lot of answers? On the, on Trino Trito needs to the tempo time? Savara there. Mm -hmm. I think playing it before you actually get all the spells in is good at this point. But Trito elects to just hold back, and I think that against this deck, that's not really a line you can afford to take. Yeah, and if you're not familiar playing against curses, curses can add up really quickly. Yeah. And his hand's not anywhere near full, so there's not really a limiting factor on the burst turns um, that I think you're going to see with the Grim Mora Sacrifice, right? Yes. So you can easily see three to four curses get dumped into a hand in a single turn. That being said, this is a pretty good Deathborn here, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, Trito can freeze the 5-5. Five five make a skeleton and get a few more which actually is pretty nice might have wanted to see the coin ping first but i think trito is like greeting the savara a little bit and uh it could be pretty big brain to put the curse back in your hand before you can get cursed again later <laughs> but i don't know if that's what trito's thinking about <laughs> you never know yeah that is very true and then yep. we're not seeing a solid alibi kind of filling the commander, right? Like, yep. So these skeletons, I think, are going to go face. I think that's assuredly happening. Are we? Do we think we're going to see the reckless apprentice first or the magister first here? I think we'll see the skeletons go face, followed by the magister and the solid alibi. That would be my inclination. Mm -hmm. Wait, just so, use really the reckless just to kind of put a body on the board yeah i don't love this line i think though that like the threat here is that if magister hits the deathborn it's pretty bad but mm -hmm. lots of ways for jespin to buff these imps and clear off this board so i'm a little a leery of, of this yeah the thing, the, yeah, the, definitely the problem here is that if the, the health gets too too wide on Jespin's side, he can eat a lot of these, um, the two the two ping damage, right? Um, yes. And plus, with the Magister, you can set up a situation where Arcane Burst can honorable kill more than once in a chain. Mm -hmm. And 
I think giving up that opportunity is a little bit disappointing on Trito's side. Like, I think that there's just a lot more upside to playing the Magister last turn. But Trito still is in a very commanding position, even with that setback. Solid alibi can come out again. Like, it's going to be very hard for Jespin to punch through at this point. Yeah, we're definitely seeing probably two solid alibis. So, Svanis has yep. Savara. Sorry, Silviara. Yeah. Has two solid alibis. That's <laughs> a solid Three alibi. Turns, I've only taken one. It has solid alibi, Deathborn, oh, and Curse. curse for oh, two, okay. two damage curse. Yeah, Jespin playing a, or a bit around that face damage, but Magister rolls Deathborn. It's uh, looking good for Trito, and as we know, Trito is a bit of a gamer, and he might just rip this rune oh. because he doesn't see it. Yeah, because that's the way you should do it, right? That's how you win. No, games. don't do it, Trito. Oh my god. Oh. What is happening? See the Savara? Coin Deathborn? All right, so Trito is going to give Jespin a chance to get it done here. If there is a Dark Vein combo with these curses, this is curse for three, four, five, six, counts up to 20 damage, 11 damage on board. Is there a way in hand to do it? Unfortunately, one mana off. But we see Tamsin roam, Abyssal Wave, Abyssal Wave which unfortunately clears Jespin's face, so that's not an option. But... <laughs> if you imp... So if you, you have to give something on the board to kind of eat these shots. Yeah, I think we might see the Tamsin into the impending catastrophe could be a line, but it doesn't really work. Jespin may very well only be running one Grimoire of Sacrifice. Yeah. I, I have seen versions that do run two, especially in this this version of the deck, um, because it's either early removal and then it's a late game setup. So. All right. So. Peter wins. Yeah, I think Jespin sort of forgot about clearing the board and well that's that close one you know it, it looked like trito had had the answers but had the opportunity at the end just for that one play where that burst turn that curses can kind of pop off yeah um, and what does that leave with us that leaves us an interview Nice. All right, so bring on I, Trito. Do any of you have him added on Discord? Um, let me check. I think I might. You do add him in here. If not, I will add him myself. Sounds good. He is a captain. We can do this. Send friend request. Okay, no, you've got it then. All right, cool. Needs to accept my friend request on Discord. Need to accept. Far on Discord. Oop. Um, I gotta make sure I pick my fantasy player. <laughs> Note to people: do not do final. Yep. Do not do fantasy football in this. At the same time, you will get okay. auto picked. As we wait for Trito to join us, kind of what is your your takeaways? What what is? Oh, wait, it looks like Judah is he joining? As he joins, what are your takeaways? Really quickly. Okay, here we go. We got Oh, let's ask Trito about it. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello, and congratulations hello. on the win. Yeah, hello, Trito. Too. Congrats. Yeah, thanks. I don't think I played that well. Did I? I, w I would like to ask the casters. Did I miss Lethal in game two? Um, you didn't miss lethal. <laughs> you didn't miss lethal, but there were. I think we had some different opinions. I uh, have a question for you about game two, though. Yeah. Look, Why I did you pick the Gorlock Ravager? I need to know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what was what was the Gorlock Ravager play? I don't. I didn't. I. I guess I could have picked Bless, but I wanted to like draw an amalgam. Okay. I, I don't know. 
what was what was that from? That was from Identity Theft, right? I didn't yes. really like the options, to be honest. But I can't remember. I was like kind of beating myself up for not picking this focus will on the, one of the Nagos instead yeah. of Identity Theft in the first place. I think that I think that might have could have been me on tilt at that point mm. but yeah i was i was really mad at myself for not picking focus will yeah i think in that spot if you had started the turn with that discover focus will would have made a lot of sense but where you were it was kind of difficult to justify yeah it's like i was more i couldn't calculate lethal but then but at this but but i realized focus will was just better anyways because it allowed my uh, frozen minion to attack. Right, but you you had a few buffs on it that would have been yeah. reset, and you would have uh, been forced to commit the blast because you had it. At, well, you it was four eight and would have become one eight, so yeah. you were would have been forced to commit blast to it and have no progress, and it wouldn't have been lethal. Rest assured, you did not miss it. Okay. You didn't miss lethal there. Yeah, is this is is a line is a line that you chose. There's just more about if. You know, once you committed the one line, you're just already past that point of decision, right? It was just a better play not to overcommit and lose the progress already. Yeah, that's correct. So another and, and question: I'm also you. mad at Game Four for not coining Varden. I was like, I pinged, realized, oh no, and then I couldn't emo because then that would kind of telegraph my hand. But I was like dying on the inside <laughs> for not coining Varden in Game Four. It happens. I do know, though, that we appreciate that you had what was likely a pretty clean lethal setup in game three, yeah. and you instead opted for the Rune of the Archmage, which got it done, but... I was know, I was definitely hovering Finley. I was like, do I do I go for it? What if I... Like, the problem was, like, my hand was double Rune Archmage and, and solid alibi, so I was afraid that if I missed... And well, could, yeah. I could be well, big trouble. It, it, if you had gone face, played wildfire, ping the face, and used solid alibi, you would have had a nine damage hero power with them at six health, and they would have had to have killed you oh, for two solid yeah. alibis. You, you had you had a guaranteed two turn lethal. Yeah. yeah, that that would that would actually just that would actually be a safe line. I I actually didn't that play never crossed my head to be honest. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we, we appreciate the room play though. We, we love the content. Yeah, that was a baller line. Anyways. I appreciated it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but just I just need to not play. Like I, I guess I was kind of nervous because I did have the swap by Arrow Elemental Shaman, and and so I guess mm. I just need to like play with a nerve. I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, I will say though, like game one though, that Naga Priest into the Druid, that was pretty sick. Like that lethal setup was nice. Very, very sick. No, absolutely. Well, def well played, and kind of leading up to this, kind of did, did the match play out, you know, work out as you thought it would, or kind of, you know, give us a sense of coming into the match and then coming out of it. Did everything kind of line up as you thought it would, or? Well, yeah, I think both me and Jaspin kind of net deck from Grandmasters. Like we both brought like the two common four four set of classes but then when i was just doing like the permutations on which which uh which art types i use i guess found that this one i had the, the lineup i picked had at least two checks into every of uh jespin's classes outside rogue so i just just went with it but game but i after uh after uh after a game Two, I realized, I realized that even if win game three, which I should be favored, I was not favored to win game four or five. But if I just, I just somehow won game four. Well, yeah. And one more question for you: How did that big game hunter make you feel? <laughs> uh, that was funny. That was definitely funny. I got pinged on it by uh, certain members of my team. 
<laughs> they were like Lamau B- BGH. I, 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 uh, yeah, that was that, that was definitely unexpected. You BGH never expected in the current year. Who to thunk it? <laughs> Nope. It's still one of the plays of the game. Yeah, it's yeah still no, that was that, that was probably the play of the match. Honestly, <laughs> it was Even pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, I think though, if you didn't have that, you might have still got through that game. Yeah, yeah, I was feeling really good about winning about game two. Um, even though it was a unfavored matchup, I was like, you know, eight eight Pelagos on turn four seems pretty good. Just. Yeah, and I mean, I think most of us would have done the same thing. Maybe if you're like Mighty, Lambie, or someone else who's been in GM, it might be like, "What about BGH?" Yeah. Maybe you'll just have maybe you'll just have that sixth sense and play around it. But who, yeah, who always play it? around it? Yep. Well played. Well, well done with the match. Uh, you know, it was it was technically very sound, and and more importantly, it was very entertainable. So entertaining for us to watch and for us to cast. So uh, definitely appreciate those matches. Yeah, thanks. All right. So uh, that's going to wrap up this week of Friday Night Fights. Um, I wanted to thank Trudeau 2, Jespin, Judo Chop, and Saku all for coming on stream. Um, some very entertaining matches that we got to watch. Um, I wanted to thank thank his dad and Kodomoro once again for being ca- our, my casters, or uh, your your casters for this evening and mine to walk us through these two great matches. Um, thank you to everyone in the chat who's watching and chatting along. Um, t- tomorrow night, I believe we're gonna have some matches. I I do not know what they are, uh, for sure. Um, but c- keep a lookout in the announcements tab. Uh, in the THL Discord for all the information you need for matches this weekend. Um, so I will leave Thank Is Dad and Kodomora to give any last words before I uh, close out stream. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. It was a fun stream and was glad to be here. And hopefully uh, you guys don't miss me too much next week. I'll miss oh, you. that's right. Yeah, uh, Dex yeah. is, is gone, so there's no Diamond Duo next week. We'll have to figure out what's going on on Friday nights, but definitely appreciate appreciate everyone checking in this night. Um, great matches, always fun, and yeah, we'll see you on ladder. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week for Friday Night Fights, and we'll see you tomorrow night for Salty Saturday. <laughs>